Good moto morning, beautiful people. Welcome to Kraken's Garage. I'm your host, Eric. And on today's episode, we're going to do part two of Anne's, what I'm now dubbing Anne's Excellent Adventures, as we chronologically go through each one of the bikes she owned when she started to ride in 1978. And this is the story of the, I think it was a 1980 Yamaha Maxim XJ650. In today's story, she talks about her first time riding two up with Pop on the back, and it doesn't turn out so well. So I hope you enjoy the story of today's episode as we continue this legacy series with Kraken's Garage. Let's get to the video. I rode the Twin Star for probably six months which I say on average is probably about right for a beginning rider on a little bike like that. Right. Uh, by then they're getting more competent and they want more power and they want more everything. So we went shopping and, and we, we, at that point, looked at a um, Honda Maxim 600. Yamaha six, Maxim. Yamaha Maxim, that's right. And it was a four-cylinder bike and I hadn't really tumbled of the fact at that point that there were twins and there were fours. Was so, the Maxim a V-twin or a V-four? The Maxim was a four. The, that's the, a, that that's called Bunch. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the, the reason I'm mentioning it because I should have been looking at another twin. Right. You know, for a woman, for weight and everything. Right. But it was metallic gray and it was beautiful and it just was everything it was somebody's dream so I had to have this thing so we bought the uh, the Yamaha and after I had been riding it for a while Flip said to me you want to get some experience with riding with somebody on the back and uh, I said, oh, oh no, I, I'm not interested in that. And he said, no, it's, it's not very far. I'm going to put the jag in the shop tomorrow and one of the guys will take me to work. But at five o'clock when I'm ready to leave the plant, I want you to come and pick me up with the Maxim and ride me on the back down Long Beach Boulevard. Anyway, he was down there and, and so he said, you can take me down to the Jag dealer, and I'll get off, and you can ride home on the bike, and I'll take the Jag home. All right, we had a plan. I was nervous about this whole thing, but I picked him up at the plant at five o'clock, and he got on the back, and I was shocked at what his 180 pounds, six foot two, felt like on the back of this little 650 bike, and I was like this way down Long Beach Boulevard. And as we crossed in at an intersection, there had been an accident apparently where somebody had rear-ended somebody else and there was broken glass all over the road. And they had cleared away the cars, but the city hadn't come and swept up the glass yet and pieces were all there. And I wasn't about to swerve with flips weight on the back of that bike so I rode right through the glass and he leaned over and yelled in my helmet you're gonna be sorry you did that and about that time the front tire blew out a piece of lens from a headlight had curled around and cut the sidewall on the front tire and it just <laughs> went <laughs> and Flip realized what had happened he was in a London Fog jacket and loafers, a shirt and necktie coming from work. And he bailed off the bike and dove into the ivy in the median strip and did a somersault and came up with, out the loafers with the necktie ripped off, with the sleeve ripped out of the jacket, with his knuckles bloody on one hand. But he was okay. I stayed with the bike much longer than I should have because I was trying to figure out why it wasn't steering. <laughs> you know, I hadn't got the picture yet. And I climbed on the high side, which I guess was instinct, and just kind of rode this thing down and slid for a long way. And I'm rolled up in the wreck and I'm lying there and Flip came running over and he yelled, get up, you're gonna be run over by a car. 
they can't see you laying on the ground. So I crawled out from under the bike and stood on the curb and and said, what now? And he, a woman next to us turned to Flip and she said, oh, I saw that accident. Is there anything I can do for you? And Flip said, yeah, you can take me down to the Jag dealer. I really need the car. <laughs> and I said, you're not going to leave me standing here with this wrecked bike and this crowd was developing and there was a traffic jam getting around the bike. And he said, I'll be right back, but we got to get the car. We really need the car, dear. And I said, okay. So off he went and he came back in, I don't know, 15 minutes. And I said, what did the Jack dealer say when you came in dressed like that? Your jacket's all shredded, you're bleeding, <laughs> your shoes are gone. And he said, I didn't tell them anything. I just went in and said, is my car ready? And they said, yes, yeah, see the cashier. So he said, with my bleeding knuckles, I signed the, the receipt and got the keys to the car and left. <laughs> Nobody said a word. <laughs> that was wonderful. But in the meantime, a flatbed truck had come, the cops probably called it, and, and they picked up the Yamaha and they took it to the Yamaha dealer and we followed it with the car. And the, the, the end of the story was kind of amusing. It was my first accident since I'd started riding and I think I had probably been very cocky. You know, I knew it all, I could do it all. I was one of the guys. and. We rolled around the back of the dealer where the flatbed was unloading this busted up bike. And the mechanics and the salesmen came out back and they all stood there and clapped. And I, I couldn't understand why they were clapping. But I guess in hindsight, they were like, well, you've had your first accident and survived it. You know, there it's you go. Passage. Yeah, there you are, rite of passage, yeah. exactly. Right. <laughs> So that was the end of the Yamaha. So Anne and I sincerely hope you enjoyed today's episode on the evolution of her uh, moto career in her lifetime. We're working very hard to try and get this documented for the family uh, to enjoy for many years to come. We have much to share. I should say she has much to share and I hope uh, that you support Anne and comment down below. She will be looking at these videos and reviewing. If you would be so kind to give my mother a thumbs up or I appreciate you sharing your life story with us, I would greatly appreciate it. Until next time, go riding because it's good for you. Peace.